Well, folks, we are at post spawn, and let me tell you, there's just so many great ways of catching these fish. Today, we seek them out. We try so many different ways, and we have a great time doing it. We start off casting, but then we end up vertical jigging, and I'll tell you what, there's just no better bite, in my opinion, than the post spawn bite. Truly a great time of the year for crappie fishing. Well, good morning. We're out here early in the morning, post spawn, and we are just now Casting over a shallow pile. There it is. Post spawn fish. I'll tell you, anytime you find these fish, they're going to be on these spots that are right outside these creeks. And uh, a lot of these piles are going to be shallow. So you have to stay off and you have to cast at them. Not everyone, but it's a small fish. But six foot down, seven foot down. A good way of catching them is just sit back let your spot lock do its thing or anchor whatever whatever you've got and uh cast let it settle let it go right over the pile and start reeling it back and a lot of times that'll lead to a fish right there was another one that's all we're gonna that's what we're doing right here starting off but we're actually gonna actually go vertical and look for some individual fish and some fish on some maybe even deeper piles. Post spawn, these fish are everywhere, and uh, it's just a great time to fish. It's a great morning. Not many boats on the lake. About 50 degrees. Water temperature is, there's one right there. Water temperature is 61. It has, we had went through a major cold spell, it's amazing. Let's see, my first fish here was big, was decent size, and now all of a sudden they've gotten small. So. That's right, folks. We're going to be going over the tactics you can use during post spawn. That means casting, that means vertical jigging. And let me tell you, we put some dandies in the boat on this trip. So we're going to utilize the 126 SV, have a great time with that. Finding those fish in deep brush was the key today. I can't wait to show you. And the slabs that we pull out is amazing. So sit back, relax, get yourself a drink. We are definitely going to be setting some major hooks and some big fish, and we're just going to have a lot of fun. So please subscribe, do me a favor, that helps me out a bunch, and uh, I want to draw back, which let's I get love. to it. Let's let it sit there. Casting with six pound, a 116th, actually, this is a 132nd ounce head uh, with a split shot on there, a number seven split shot. got off. Felt like another small fish though. All right, one more time. Letting it drop, letting it drop, letting it drop. Yeah, and see a lot of times they'll get it right on the drop. These fish are hungry, man. This is definitely better. Today I'm using the whatchamacallit from Jinko Fishing, a 32nd ounce head, a number 5 split shot, trying to get it down there quick. I'm even using that when I cast. Usually I would use a number 7 split shot, but today it's number 5. Good piece of structure coming here with some decent fish on it. Here, let's see if we can get something done.
been going back and forth between my 13 footer and my 10 footer basically just because I have different baits on diff different rods and I have the 13 footer in here. I like to use the 13 footer when I'm sniping and, I'm, and the fish are relatively shallow. I can stay away from it better. But right now I'm just using the, the Gray Pro Series from Ozark Rod. So. Could be a real good fish. He's a fighter, that's for darn sure. <laughs> you love how they feel, man. Just kicking. This guy is giving it, giving it its all. It's good fish. Oh, look at this! Now look at that. That's a beautiful fish. That's probably a 13 incher. See how how hard that sucker hit that right there. I should take a picture of that, that's for sure. I honestly thought I would be uh, sniping today. Instead I'm on a, this is a really thick tree and I'm, and I'm going deep into it. I'm like dropping all the way down. You can see that the big ones are at the bottom. You cast over the top, you get the small ones. But the big ones are deep inside. Just dipping. It's almost like just fishing the buck brush at Red Lake. Big, huge tree. Let me show you a picture of it. All right, this is my first attempt at actually videoing on the 126 SV, so I apologize it's not the best, but I think it definitely illustrates what I was fishing. You can see the structure, and then you can also see the big fish that are right around the bottom, and I'll start to mark those with arrows. Pretty clear cut in my opinion and really cool to, to see. Look at that fish, man. Deep in the brush. Bam, good fish, good fish, all right. So we're gonna review the loop knot. Let's do that. We got a nice, beautiful day. I've got a 32nd ounce slasher head right here, okay? I've threaded it through the eye with the six pound high-vis line, okay? I simply grab the other end Swing it around, and then I grab that slasher head, and I put it back through that loop that I made. Feed it through, and then if you'd like to wet it, you can, and you tighten it, and that, my friends, is a perfect loop knot right there. That is absolutely perfect. That's about a quarter, half inch off the jig head. Use my teeth because that's not good for you, and that is it. It's perfect. Loop knot. Fish in thick cover. Post spawn, you can flat out do anything. But today we are definitely putting bigger fish in the boat by fishing thick cover. And yes, it's near spawning areas for sure. But it looks like those big fish are down there deep. That's pretty cool. They're deep. The little guys are up on top. You want to catch those you can catch those all day long which are make great eaters to be quite honest with you but we like to catch big fish <laughs> that's always the fun part but on my guide trips the first question i always ask is uh are we on a meat run or do we want to do a combination of whatever usually it's always a combination of whatever 
and if we want to fill the live up real well up real quick we can hit some trees that are pretty loaded down with eaters you still will get the big fish occasionally for example this tree right here you know this big tree you could I, I guarantee you we could sit here right now for the next hour and a half and catch small eater fish all day long the hard work is you know going deep into it that's a seven number seven split shot right there going right into it you risk losing a jig I just did um, but the rewards high because you get a big fish and that's always fun to fight took the bait the entire thing either my knot was not properly witted dang it oh man so i mean i might show you well it actually broke it where i put the uh, where i put the uh, weight so it wasn't the knot itself loop knot um it was where i put the um, split shot and you do run a risk when you put those split shots on the line of, um, you know, hurting the line, abrasing the line, cutting the line. Ooh, that happened fast. Not as big as I would like. Probably a small fish of the day, almost. Nice and colored up though. Whoa, that was a big fish. Yes, it is. Hey, thanks for joining me today, folks. We're gonna hoist in this 1.8. <laughs> On that slasher head, check it out, he hammered it. That is a big fish. Thanks again for joining me, I appreciate it. Great day on the water, three pound fishing. Bam, please subscribe. Thanks for watching another three pound fishing episode sponsored by these great companies. Hey folks, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it, especially if you made it this far through the video. These are some of the photos that I took during the actual tripping, the trip that I took. And I can tell you that it was just a great time, just focusing in on trying to find big fish and using a couple you know, tactics that we do during post-spawn. Thanks again.